During the final phase of victory over Hitler's Nazis, Yank armies swarm across western Germany, bringing devastation to cities of the Reich. From all sides, Allied might crushes in on the remains of the Wehrmacht, bringing home the horrors of war to the German people as they have never experienced it before. This was the Allied victory. But if you were German, it was your defeat. And now, we are hated, objects of contempt. We are poor, downtrodden, and despised by all. The German people had known for some time that they would lose the war. And that they would soon be called to account for what had been done in their names. My fingers are shaking as I write this. Everyone is now turning their backs on Adolf. No one was ever a supporter. Everyone was persecuted and no one denounced anyone else. What about me? I was there. I breathed what was in the air. It affected all of us. This is not the story of how Adolf Hitler seized power in Germany. This is the story of how and why the German people gave it to him. It's easy to throw stones, easy to sit in judgment when you are in the midst of abundance, roast chicken, and the good life. We do differently, people say. We would long since have shaken off the dictatorship of Nazi terror. Would they really have? Some of what you will see has never been shown on American television before. And some of it cannot be shown in Germany, even today. These are their words. Their films. This is the rise of the Third Reich. There had once been another war. And another German defeat. The end of the war meant husbands restored to wives and life restored to men. But there was no sense of joy, only defeat, anxiety, senseless gunfights, confusion. If you were German in 1919, 
Your peace was humiliation and suffering. Enforced democracy had resulted in chaos. Money was worthless. Vigilantes ruled the streets. Berlin had become a swamp of depravity. Everything and everyone was for sale. The atmosphere has become revolutionary. Apocalyptic. Not only money, but all standards have lost their value. Saviors have appeared everywhere, declaring that they've been sent by God to save the world. Mystics, magicians, and religious fanatics drew followers desperate for rescue. Each was called a Heiland, or savior. But in German, there is no plural word for savior. There can be only one. In Munich, there is a corporal who has been causing trouble. They say he has an almost hypnotic power. It was the 2nd of September, 1923. Here at this nationalist rally, Adolf Hitler made one of his first appearances on film. They say he puts up signs at his meetings saying, no entry for Jews. But he has the most persuasive line about German honor and rights for the workers and a new society. And whether you like him or not, he certainly knows what he wants. Two months after this film was shot, he would attempt to take over Germany and fail. Overnight, Hitler became a national figure. To some magnetic, to others, absurd. The Munich savior filled the headlines with a ridiculous attempt to stage a revolution in a beer cellar. In fact, the revolutionaries had been dispersed by police fire as they left the cellar. And that? was the end of the matter. But it wasn't. The swastika, or Hakenkreuz flag, carried that day by Hitler's National Socialist Party, was stained with the blood of the fallen. From this point forward, Hitler would call it the flag of martyrs, and use it to inspire a growing following of true believers. Nazis. I feel electrified. A man by the name of Adolf Hitler has tried to restore honor to the German people. I feel with an increasing certainty that a man has arisen to lead the fatherland towards a brighter future.
Here in Bukerberg, in north central Germany, film hobbyist Adolf von Hinuber shot this film with his 9.5 millimeter camera. Two hundred miles away, in Berlin, communists were filming these violent clashes with police. But if you were a loyal follower of Adolf Hitler, you would have been here. It was August 2nd, 1929 and the National Socialists were filming their third party rally, the first here in Nuremberg. One hundred thousand Nazis attended. Suddenly, Adolf Hitler appears. He goes to each man, shaking his hand. There are things one cannot explain, cannot describe. I never stop thinking of him. Sometimes he meets us in our dreams. In this footage, Hitler consecrates Nazi party flags by touching them to the Blutfahne, the blood-stained swastika of his failed revolution. The loyalists were dazzled. People call him a fool and a dreamer and much more. But what you say is true, Adolf Hitler. It is critical to our nation's history that we introduce over 65 million people to the ideas of National Socialism. 65 million National Socialists. Wonderful, fantastic, this goal. Most Germans still thought of Hitler as too radical, if they thought of him at all. But in less than three months, Wall Street would crash and take the German economy down with it. And within a year, the Nazis would be one of the largest political parties in Germany. While we descended into misery and called anxiously for a savior, he emerged like a mountain. Columns march, drums beat, and a hundred thousand men stand firmly gathered around one man. Now, build up your people, O oh Master. A new great fatherland awaits. You're watching Third Reich, The Rise. For more on Hitler's early life, go to history.com. It was 1932, 
This footage was recorded at a carnival near Leipzig, Germany. Filmmaker Walter Langer brought his 16 millimeter camera and the girl he would marry. The atmosphere was joyful. But beyond these carnival gates, there were calls for revolution. If you were German and you wanted change, you had two choices. Either you joined the growing numbers of communists, or, like Walter Langer, you joined the Nazi party. The Great Depression was in its third year. And Germany had suffered as much as any country. German mother, your children's father and provider stands before the closed down factories, unemployed, without bread, without the hope that his lot and life will change. German mother, you want a good future and freedom for your children. This is why you will vote on the 13th of March for Adolf Hitler. On film, Walter Langer documented Hitler's first and only bid for elected office, the German presidency. If you opposed the Nazis, you were sure that this was the end of Hitler. Hitler himself is still rather a handicap for the movement that has gathered around him. Besides, for ordinary Germans, his personal appearance is thoroughly repellent. The epileptic behavior, the wild gesticulations and foaming at the mouth, the alternately shifty and staring eyes. Most of those who have begun to acclaim Hitler would probably avoid asking him for a light if they met him in the street. But in less than a year, Hitler would be chancellor. It was the 10th of February, 1933. Although they had never captured more than 37% of the popular vote, 
The Nazis were the largest political party in Germany. And so, German leaders installed Hitler as chancellor. As many as 20 million people across Germany were tuned in to this radio broadcast. Hitler's largest audience ever. After this speech, Nazi party offices were flooded with so many membership requests, they had to suspend admissions. Even so, Hitler did not yet control Germany. In two weeks, that would change. You're watching Third Reich, The Rise. For more on the Nazi party, go to history.com. It was the morning of February 28, 1933. If you lived in Berlin, you awoke to this. During the night, someone had set fire to Germany's parliament. Just now, the revolution has begun in earnest. The middle class had been repelled by the roughness and lack of polish by the Nazis. Now, they've been frightened and won over by the Reichstag fire.
To this day, no one is certain who set the fire that destroyed the Reichstag. But Hitler knew who he would blame. His rivals, the communists. The Nazi press said that the Reichstag fire was intended as a signal for communist cells across Germany to rise up and revolt. They wanted to send armed mobs into villages to commit murder and plunder. Hostages would be taken from the middle class. Wives and children of police officers used as human shields. The destruction of all cultural values, just like in Russia. Hitler had invented a communist threat. Now he would use it to crush his opposition. The morning after the fire, I discussed these matters with a few friends. All of them are very interested in the question of who really started the fire. And more than one of them hinted that they had doubts about the official story. But none of them were bothered that from now on, their telephones would be tapped, their letters opened, and their desks broken into. Radical and violent changes were happening across Germany. But Hitler had justified them all. This ruthless intervention by the government may appear strange, but we must clean up. The communists have to disappear. Day, flags raised, buildings taken over, people shot, newspapers banned. It is shocking how naked acts of violence, breaches of the law, barbaric opinions appear quite undisguised as official decree. Actually, it's terribly risky even to be writing this. It was the 23rd of March. The communists were in jail. There was no one left to stop the new Nazi majority in Germany's parliament. when delegates voted to consolidate all power in Adolf Hitler. He had been chancellor for exactly 52 days. Now, for all intents and purposes, he was dictator. We cry with happiness and joy. All 
traces of resistance have been eliminated. Enthusiasm grips the entire nation. We can barely believe that our beloved Führer stands alone at the helm of the Reich. Church bells ring. Children wave flags. There are daily parades. The people have become used to cheering. Even when there's no reason for it. It is reason enough that people who distance themselves from the Nazis are tortured to death, daily, with steel whips and electric drills. Better to celebrate, howl with the wolves. Heil, heil, heil. You're watching Third Reich, The Rise. For more on World War II, go to history.com. It was the 28th of March, 1933. Adolf Hitler had been dictator of Germany for five days. Even so, unless you openly opposed the Nazis, your life went on as before. But for some, that was about to change. We are having lunch with a law professor and his wife. They are both Jewish. The amazing thing is that this clever, charming woman is not at all opposed to the Nazis. On the contrary, she lectures us on the outstanding qualities of Adolf Hitler, on the greatness of the age which we are allowed to witness, on the national rebirth. And she is firmly convinced that no harm whatsoever will come to educated Jews in Germany. Four days after this lunch, Nazi party member Walter Lenger used his camera to document another historic moment in the new Third Reich. The Nazis were boycotting all Jewish businesses in Germany. Fewer than one in 100 Germans were Jewish. Most saw themselves as Germans first. Even so, 
Hitler said the Jews were Germany's misfortune. Suddenly, everyone feels justified or required to have an opinion about the Jews and to state it publicly. Distinctions are made between decent Jews and others. I sympathize with the Jews. However, I would support their conversion to Christianity with all honesty. Why do they still lie when they already have the power to do what they like? I want to know that. Why don't they just kill us if that's what they want? This footage was shot at the Iranian Burk concentration camp outside Berlin in the spring of 1933. It shows an orderly camp where prisoners are treated humanely. But if you were there, you would have experienced something much different. No one ever knows when it will be his turn to be beaten, or for what he must be beaten. Those who are beaten up in the camp usually do not say a word, because they dare not. But at night, you could hear the groans and sobbing. friend tells this story. A man's garden was dug up. There was supposed to be a machine gun in it. But nothing was found. To squeeze a confession, they beat him. His corpse was brought back to the hospital. His body had boot marks on the stomach and fist-sized holes in the back. The official cause of death? Dysentery. The message was clear. Opposition of any kind would not be tolerated. The Third Reich had begun its rise. You're watching Third Reich, The Rise. For more on World War II, go to history.com. It was January 1st, 1934, and the Nazis were ringing in the new year. A year of success is behind us. People, state, and nation have become one. And the strong will of the Fuhrer is over us all. Germany stands before the world as an unshakable unity. But not everyone was welcome. 
in the new regime. Only those citizens the Nazis believed were racially superior. And this year, they would begin to engineer more of them. In 1934, Nazi party member Kurt Hartmann and his wife Lotta welcomed this new baby boy. Ulrich Hartmann was lucky that his parents did not suffer from undesirable genetic traits. Because this year, the Nazis would begin surgically preventing those Germans from breeding. The Nazis made propaganda films like these to encourage compliance with the new law. But you could be forcibly sterilized for anything they considered a genetic flaw. I have been informed by writing that I am to be rendered infertile. I reject this decision. I cannot understand why they want to sterilize me since I've done nothing wrong. Anyone could have suffered from a nervous breakdown. Emma was sterilized anyway. noticed in these triumphant Nazi celebrations a new feature I never used to see. Behind the band and its following of brown-shirted storm troops, there is now a long tale of civilian flag wavers who never used to march with them. It was the 25th of February. These Nazi loyalists were assembled in Munich for what was billed as the biggest oath-taking in human history. If you knew what was good for you, you joined them. The program for In 
In 1934, Court and Lotta Hartmann's oldest son, Peter, began school. Like other German boys, on his first day, he learned the mandatory German greeting, Heil Hitler. If you were an adult and you didn't use the Hitler greeting, you risked being sent to a concentration camp. So now, in public at least, it seemed as if everyone was a Nazi. Everyone, literally everyone, cringes with fear. No letter, no telephone conversation, no word on the street is safe anymore. Everyone fears the next person may be an informer. You're watching Third Reich, The Rise. For more on World War II, go to history.com. Summer, 1934. Nazi party member Adolf von Hennuber filmed this footage here on the island of Borkum in the North Sea. He and his friends were welcome at this popular vacation spot. Jews were not. For decades, the residents of Borkum proudly claimed to be free of Jews. And this year, the Nazis would set that goal for all of Germany. If you were a devoted Nazi party member, the summer ended, as they all did, with the annual pilgrimage to Nuremberg for the party rally. For the faithful, this was the most highly anticipated event on the Nazi calendar. But the rally of 1934 would be particularly special. Because this year, they would film the most influential piece of Nazi propaganda ever made. What I witnessed in Nuremberg is one of the most remarkable events I have ever experienced.
I cannot compare it to anything I've ever experienced before as an artist. Mein Führer, ich melde 52.000 Arbeitsmänner zum Appell angetreten. Halt, Arbeitsmänner! Halt, mein Führer! Capture the glory of the Third Reich. Filmmaker Lenny Reifenstahl helped to stage it, directing and rehearsing this scene at least 50 times. Kamerad, woher stammst du? Aus Friesenland. Und du, Kamerad? Vom Kaiserstuhl. Und du? Von der Donau, vom Rhein. Und von der Saar. Ein Volk, ein Führer, ein Reich, ein Land. The film Triumph of the Will premiered to worldwide acclaim, winning awards in Germany, Venice, and finally Paris. Within a year of that award, Adolf Hitler was named Time Magazine's Man of the Year. A teacher in Dornberg had the children recite, Jews are sinners. They slaughter Christian children. They cut their throats. The damned Jewish filth. The teacher threatened to punish the children if they would not learn the poem by heart by the following day. It was September 15th, 1935, and once again, the Nazi faithful were gathering in Nuremberg. In a speech that was broadcast to the nation, Hitler addressed what he called the Jewish problem. After these three laws were read, the halls rang with minute-long applause. It was the call of a wild animal, a beast that smells blood. You're watching Third Reich. The Rise. For more on World War II, go to history.com.
Welcome to Berlin, capital of the German Reich. It was the summer of 1936, and the world was coming to Berlin. For Berlin, 1936 is the Olympic year, and therefore Berlin is presenting herself in festival dress. The main theme are the flags of the new party's designs, the black swastikas in a white circle on a red background. Germany's capital was hosting the 11th Olympic Games. And the Third Reich produced tourism films like this to encourage foreigners to visit. Hitler wanted the world to see the Nazi Renaissance for itself. And so, for two weeks in August, the Nazis put on a show. If you were a foreign tourist at the Olympics, the Nazis might have convinced you that Germany was an open and tolerant nation. For the first time in three years, foreign newspapers were available for purchase. The signs prohibiting Jews from public parks or benches had been taken down. If you were German, you knew this was not Nazi Germany. I find the Olympics so odious. It's constantly being drummed into the foreigners that here, one is witnessing the revival the flowering, the unity of spirit of the Third Reich, which lovingly embraces the whole world. Ich verkünde die Spiele von Berlin zur Feier der ersten Olympiade und neuer Zeitrechnung. Outside the stadium gates, Berlin's hotel and restaurant workers had been instructed to treat foreigners with extreme tolerance. Many American athletes commented that they had never been so well treated at home. Foreigners, who know Germany only from what they have seen here, can carry home just one impression. It is that this is a nation happy and prosperous beyond belief, that Hitler is one of the greatest, if not the greatest, political leaders in the world today, and that Germans are a peaceful people who deserve the best the world can give them. When the games ended, the tourists went home. 
Berlin returned to normal. And Lotta and Kurt Hartmann returned to Brunswick, where they screened their Olympic home movies for Sons Ulrich and Peter. Peter Hartmann was proud to be a German boy. And so he joined the Hitler Youth. By 1936, all children over 10 were required to join, whether they were willing or not. Many thousands of new members were to be presented to Hitler as a gift for his 48th birthday. If you were a 10-year-old boy in Germany, you too might have wanted to join after watching films like this. For our field exercises, our squad has to find the other squad through military reconnaissance. Once the enemy squad is found, there are fist fights. This exercise is supposed to teach us that comradeship, as they call it, is formed in battle. We are dreadfully worried. The boys won't listen to us anymore. When my wife insisted that our oldest obey, he drew his dagger and assaulted her. He shouted, I belong to the Fuhrer first. The family comes second. Within two years, Nearly eight million children had taken the Hitler Youth Oath of Allegiance. I swear to devote myself to Adolf Hitler. I am willing and ready to give up my life, so help me God. In the end, many of them would. You're watching Third Reich, The Rise. For more on World War II, go to history.com. It was 1937. 
and amateur filmmaker Walter Langer celebrated his wedding by making this short film. Langer and his bride were exactly the kind of Germans Hitler wanted more of. Industrious, politically enthusiastic, and most importantly, Aryan. Women like Mrs. Langer were encouraged by the Reich to have as many children as possible. Because if the Third Reich was going to achieve its goals, it didn't just need better Germans, it needed more of them. In the eyes of our beloved leader, the mother is the most important person in the nation. We are Germany's hope in the future. And it is our duty to breed and rear the new generation of sons and daughters. This female division of the Hitler Youth was filmed hiking outside Munich in 1937. Participation was mandatory for these girls, who were required to document that they were Aryan and free of hereditary disease. Dear mother and father, in our camp, there are 48 girls. Near us is a boys' camp. We see the boys very often and mend their clothing as we spend the evenings with them. A funny thing, of these 48 girls, 35 are pregnant. And still funnier, I'm one of the 35. Upon learning of her daughter's pregnancy, one girl's horrified mother rushed to the camp to investigate and discipline her daughter. The 16-year-old replied hotly that if her mother did not go home and leave her alone, she would report her to the camp leader, who would in turn report the mother to the Gestapo, who would then take action against her for sabotaging German motherhood. Here's a bulletin from Vienna. Chancellor Hitler termed Austria the latest and greatest addition to the German Reich. A hysterical roar of cheers today is Vienna. The crowd was described as one of the greatest gatherings ever assembled in the Austrian capital. Meanwhile, an unidentified man fired at Nazi stormtroopers from a window and then shot himself dead. Later, at a downtown cafe, a man got up from a table, shouted Heil Hitler, and then stabbed himself.
It was the 12th of March, and Hitler was taking Austria. The treaty that had ended World War I forbade the union of Germany and Austria. But the majority of Austrians wanted it. As one foreign newspaper observed, if Hitler was raping Austria, then the Austrians liked getting raped. Overnight, the German Empire had grown by five million citizens. Within days, 70,000 Austrians would be sent to concentration camps. Nazi songs and Nazi salutes everywhere. The city is a sea of swastika flags. When did they manage to sew all these huge swastika flags? When did all our nice neighbors obtain their swastika insignia? What happened? As I write, an immense flight of bombers is droning past overhead. As though these planes were flying against a world power. You, up there, I hate you. I do not know if I will survive your downfall, but this I do know. This is a caricature of Germany. Smeared by a malignant ape, escaped from a leash. You're watching Third Reich, The Rise. For more on World War II, go to history.com. It was the summer of 1938. And celebration was in the air. Here in Munich, the Third Reich was preparing to celebrate the Nazification of German culture. 200 miles north, in Leipzig, Walter Langer and his wife were celebrating their birthdays. He turned 40, and she 30. And in the nation's capital of Berlin, Jewish journalist Bella Fromm was also celebrating. When I found myself outside the American consulate, the American visa in my hand. I had to sit down on the stone steps and cry in my grateful happiness. I'm going as soon as I can. I must manage to get out of Germany before it is too late.
It was the 9th of July, 1938. By special will of the Führer, the city of Munich was hosting a 72-hour festival dedicated to German art. If you were one of the many thousands of visitors, you would have seen the ideal Germany rendered in paintings, sculptures, and etchings, all hand-selected by Hitler himself. I was conducted through the house of German art. I could hardly believe my eyes. The trend is eroticism. To give German men the incentive to have many German children. And the glory of the German farmer who feeds the nation's warriors. And of course, heroism in battle. Concluding the three-day art orgy is a six-mile-long procession celebrating 2,000 years of German culture with floats drawn by army horses and thousands of men and women in costume. It goes on for three solid hours. At the end, the symbol of the Third Reich, the sovereign German eagle. But the climax, which brings the German spectators to their feet, is the goose-stepping soldiers. It is an admission of the Fuhrer's restless plans for world conquest. In less than 12 weeks, Hitler will move to invade neighboring Czechoslovakia. popular tourist countries in the world. The new national travel offices relieve the tourists of the usual travel worries. But if you were a German Jew like Bella Fromm, moving around Germany was difficult. Getting out usually meant giving up everything you had. I did not spare money on my travel. Because I'd have to leave it in Germany anyway. To get out, I had to pay next year's taxes in advance, even though I will not be in Germany at all. But no price is too much. This is a country to get out of, even if you have to do it naked. Wir 
It was the 26th of September, and the annual Oktoberfest in Munich was in full swing. But in a few minutes, Hitler himself would put an end to the festivities. Suddenly, the roller coasters stop. On the loudspeakers, the Fuhrer is raging against Czechoslovakia. Never have I seen such a large crowd change from elation to gloom so instantaneously. Hitler had demanded that Czechoslovakia cede a large portion of its German-speaking territory to the Third Reich. If Czechoslovakia refused, Germany vowed to invade. Twenty-four hours later, the evening of September 27th. Here in Berlin, German soldiers prepared for an invasion. In only a few hours, they would roll to the Czechoslovakian border. Have the people any idea what they are being forced into? No, I don't want any part of it. We want peace. And tomorrow there will be war. Safe aboard this gorgeous boat. It is almost too much for me to believe. Then, when I do become acutely aware of my good fortune, I almost feel guilty, remembering the unfortunate ones who wait, desperately hoping for their chance to get out. On the day Bella Fromm sailed for America, this baby girl was born in the town of Halberstadt, outside Berlin. Vibke Klamroth's mother and father are enthusiastic Nazis. But it is only September of 1938. The Third Reich will last for another seven years. And in those seven years, Hitler will betray, impoverish, and ultimately destroy 
the Clamroth family. Along with the rest of Germany. It was 1938. This footage, never before seen, was shot by an American family vacationing in Germany. Their home movie captured the glory of Hitler's Third Reich. One nation, one people, united behind one leader, and poised to conquer the world. No longer does a German need to be ashamed to be German. We once again have our honor. But in the end, the Third Reich would bring every German eternal shame. You mark my words. If we are defeated, we will be given no quarter. We will be starved to death or butchered. That will be the fate of every German. Whether he is a Nazi or not. These are their words, their film. This is the form of the Third Reich. It was September of 1938. For weeks, Germans like Elsa Klamroth and her family have lived under the threat of war. At the time of her daughter Vibke's birth, Hitler demanded that a portion of Czechoslovakia be returned to Germany. Instead of fighting, on September 29th, the European powers gave it to him. Now, Vibke's father wouldn't be going to war after all. Hitler has won a massive victory without a battle. Faith and admiration of our great Fuhrer have strengthened and deepened. Even when I thought that 
was no longer possible. Nobody wants war. Everyone is doing so well. We're earning money. We have a car, a refrigerator, a record player. What is the point of war? Remember Germany in the days before Adolf Hitler? Tens of thousands of factories had closed their gates. Millions of workers lost their jobs. Now, the nations around us look with amazement when they see the unprecedented economic growth that has occurred in Germany over the past five years. The German miracle. The miracle was being financed in part by land and raw material stolen from other countries. But if you were German, what mattered to you was that there was regular work and even state-subsidized leisure. It was our first real holiday. Six meals a day. Lots of courses at lunch served by uniformed waiters. There was music, dancing, new films, and lectures. Before, only the rich could do that. But not everyone experienced the German miracle. This cruise liner, the St. Louis, took workers and Nazi party leaders on excursions to Italy, Norway, and the West Indies. Soon, the St. Louis would take another group of Germans on a very different kind of voyage. On November 9th, the Nazis unleashed a two-day orgy of violence on Jewish businesses, places of worship, and Jews themselves. This is one of the few existing films of what came to be known as Kristallnacht, or Night of Broken Glass. Here in the town of Buell, firemen are seen ignoring the burning synagogue and working instead to save the Aryan homes and businesses next door. Meanwhile, the residents of Buell stand and watch.
Today, the morning after, I watched my fellow passengers on the train. Only a few people looked up out the window to see the burning synagogues. Everyone's expression seems somehow to be asking forgiveness. But if everyone is ashamed, who smashed those windows? If you were Jewish, you understood now your neighbors would either ignore or applaud your destruction. Our circle of Jewish friends is scattering to the winds. Next week, the Hirschbergs are leaving for England. The week after that, the Weissmans for America. Everyone is making enormous efforts to get out. We personally are having no success. From the American consulate in Berlin, we received waiting list registration number 56,429. In May of 1939, the St. Louis sailed from Germany with nearly 1,000 Jewish refugees. Three weeks later, they were turned away by Cuba, the United States, and Canada. The St. Louis returned to Europe. Within the year, most of its passengers would once again be under Nazi rule. You're watching Third Reich, The Fall. For more on Kristallnacht, go to history.com. Anna Bell, ach bitte komm doch schnell, so schreibe ich täglich, denn das Leben Anna Bell ist nur mit dir erträglich. It was the 20th of April, 1939 in Berlin, Hitler's 50th birthday. And this would be the biggest birthday celebration in the history of mankind. The spectacle here was rivaled only by the passion of the Führer's followers. I witnessed the festivities. I heard the clamor. 
saw the enraptured faces of the women. Through it all, this moronic roar of Heil, hysterical females, adolescents in a trance, an entire people in the spiritual state of whirling dervishes. These people are insane. Dear Führer, I wish you, for the completion of your 50th year of life, God's greatest blessing. I have never been among those who write letters, but now, the constant thought, I should be the Führer's wife. I want to give Uncle Hitler something on his birthday. But I don't have anything. Mommy had to write this since I'm only four years old. It was the summer of 1939. Here, in a small town near Chemnitz, the Wussner family was filming their son Conrad and his little brother in their garden. The title card here reads, Conrad wants to go to the party rally in Nuremberg. Three hundred miles away, this Hitler youth troop was filming their bike trip to the Polish border. It's likely that they, too, were looking forward to the annual party rally. But within days of this trip, Hitler canceled it. This year's theme would have been Rally of Peace. Instead, Germany would wage war directly across this border. During the summer of 1939, if you went to the movies in Germany, you would have seen propaganda films like this. The Nazis claimed that the Poles were terrorizing ethnic Germans near the border. In truth, 21 of these attacks had been staged by the Nazis themselves to justify war. We interrupt this broadcast. The few who have just arrived to address the Reichstag, which has been called an extraordinary session. Poland for the first time this evening has shot at regular soldiers upon our territory. From now on, bomb will be met by bomb. If you were German, you knew that this, finally, 
would mean war with England and France. Another world war. But you may have also believed, like Hans George Klamroth, that you had no choice but to defend German blood and German honor. Dear Elsa, if I survive these hours, I shall certainly think of them every day. It would be a pity if I were to die, and sad for you and the children. But what are we compared to the greatness of destiny? You're watching Third Reich, The Fall. For more on World War II, go to history.com. It was September 4th, 1939. The third day of Germany's assault on Poland. But that morning, across Germany, people awoke to an enemy threat in their own backyards. Sometime in the night, British bombers had flown into German airspace and dropped 13 tons of propaganda leaflets on the people below. Warning from England to the German people. The truth has been withheld from you. You cannot win this war. We will not relent. Pass this leaflet on. Meanwhile, in Poland, German bombers were leveling cities. Warsaw, Poland. American filmmaker Julian Bryan was the last Western journalist left in the city during the Nazi siege. He would later smuggle this film out of the country. One day, I had a chance to take pictures of 20 or more German soldiers. I asked them why they were inflicting such terrible tortures upon the Polish people. They answered as one, wir müssen, we must. The 
The German onslaught lasted for 18 days before Poland finally surrendered. From Warsaw, Hans George Klamroth wrote his wife. Shocking destruction of the city. If they had surrendered sooner, it wouldn't have happened. But the Poles are very proud. They hate us, and I can't blame them. At any rate, we're grateful that the war hasn't come to our country, and I hope it never will. And now, for England. I haven't the slightest idea of what will happen to me. This much I do know. Germany will prevail. Even if Europe has to be turned into ruins and ashes. We are the children of the gods, and they are most merciful. You're watching Third Reich, The Fall. For more on World War II, go to history.com. It was June 1940. In only six weeks, Germany had conquered the Netherlands, Norway, Denmark, and Belgium. Dear Maddie, it is wonderful what our soldiers are achieving. Today, we can be proud to be German sons and daughters. Love, Carl. But as the Nazis spread through Europe, so did stories of their atrocities. Slave labor, deportations, massacres, it was reported that storks migrating from Holland to South Africa had messages taped to their legs reading, help us. The Nazis are killing us all. By mid-June, Germany had also conquered France. Across Europe, German troops like these enjoyed the spoils of their success.
Some, like Walter Langer, filmed them. Others, like Carl Fuchs, wrote home about them. Dear Mother, I've seen quite a bit of France so far. But again and again, I say to myself, there's nowhere as beautiful and clean as our great German fatherland. Yours, Carl. From the occupied countries, German troops shipped home wines, cheeses, paintings, and jewelry. From Poland, they shipped home people to be used as slaves. Germans, the Pole must never be your comrade. He is inferior to each German on his farm or in his factory. Be just, but never forget that you are a member of the master race. Is it possible that one can get used to war? We still have our comforts and warmth. We have enough to eat. And occasionally, we even have hot water. When I think how terrified we were of air raids before the war, you could almost call them harmless. War is not so bad if it goes on like this. But it would not go on like this for long. The fall of the Third Reich would begin in the East. By chance, my husband turns the radio on this morning. We're at war with Russia. It was the 22nd of June, 1941, and three million German troops were invading the Soviet Union. It's the seventh conflict in one and a half years. Poland, Norway, Holland, Belgium, France, Africa, Yugoslavia, Greece. Well, our people are so patient and strong. We're now taking on Russia as well. No one doubts that we will win there too. Wilhelm Bleitner filmed this footage of his unit, the 29th Infantry Division, and their march toward the Soviet city of Stalingrad. He and his comrades expected that the Soviet Union would surrender in less than five months. Dearly beloved Maddie, 
Today was a day of pride for us all. Victoriously, we marched into Lithuania. Yesterday, I knocked off a Russian tank. If I get in another attack, I'll receive my first battle stripes. War is half as bad as it sounds. And one thing is plain as day. All of us believe in an early victory. Yours, Carl. Dear Mrs. Fuchs, I have the sad duty to inform you that Carl was killed on the field of battle. I hope it will be a small consolation for you when I tell you that he gave his life so that our fatherland may live. Signed, Lieutenant Reinhardt, Company Commander. Five days after Carl Fuchs' death, Wilhelm Leitner filmed this scene somewhere along the Eastern Front. The sign reads, these beasts of Russian Regiment 239 mutilated and killed already wounded German soldiers. Carl Fuchs died, knowing only the glory of the Third Reich, not what would follow. You're watching Third Reich, The Fall. For more on World War II, go to history.com. It was summer, 1941. And these German troops were among the three million spreading east across the Soviet Union. Letters home and on film, they documented triumph after triumph. Our destiny is pushing us. There is nothing but victorious encirclements, advances, and extraordinary numbers of captives and booty from the Russian campaign. Our victory is never in doubt. Some of the men who brought their cameras also documented something else. The films you are about to see depict violence and murder. Viewer discretion is advised. This home movie shows Germans stationed in the East enjoying their time on leave.
The rest of the film on this reel was shot in Zlozic, Ukraine. Here, those same Germans oversaw the extermination of three to four thousand Jews. This is Lebau, Latvia. An off-duty German naval officer stationed near here filmed these Jews being led to a trench outside of town. The killings continued until the trench was full. And then another trench was dug. Beloved wife, dear children, you needn't worry that we are living badly here. We have to eat and drink well because of the nature of our work. I do not want to write about it any further. It would only make your heart heavy, needlessly. This footage was filmed by a German soldier home on leave from the Eastern Front. Family members who had served there rarely talked about what they had seen and done in the East. But Willie Rees, a 21-year-old soldier, wrote this when he returned to Germany marched into Russia, murdered the Jews, strangled the women, killed the children. Everyone knows what we bring. It was the spring of 1942. And if you were German, life during wartime wasn't much different than life before. But that was about to change. These home movies were filmed by Cologne resident Peter Fischer. Since it was Saturday, we took a walk through the forest. Then we went shopping for a few things. Tomorrow, we'll take our usual hike, and I'll bring the blanket. But tomorrow would turn out very differently for Peter Fisher and his family. Above, in front, behind, hell has broken loose. There had been air raids before, but not like this. From his bedroom window, Peter Fisher filmed as 1,000 British bombers laid siege to Cologne. It was the largest air raid of the war to date.
The next day, Fisher had to hide his camera to film the devastation of his city. Documenting scenes like these was outlawed by the Nazis. Men, women, and children lie dead under these ruins. The first of them are now being recovered and laid out on the sidewalks. But Cologne was only the beginning. By now, the United States had joined England in the war against Germany. Days later, the Allies followed the Cologne air raid with another run. This time, they dropped tens of thousands of warning leaflets over German towns. We are bombing Germany, city by city, and ever more terribly, to make it impossible for you to go on with the war. Let the Nazis drag you down to disaster with them, if you will. That is for you to decide. We are coming, by day and by night. You're watching Third Reich, The Fall. For more about the Holocaust, go to history.com. It was June of 1942. If you were one of the 45,000 Germans made homeless by the Allied air raids on Cologne, you would have been processed here in this refugee center outside the city. You'd be given food, medical treatment, and a shower. You might also receive personal items left behind by Jews who had been your neighbors. The same week that the Nazis were caring for the people in this refugee camp, the world first learned about other German camps in Eastern Europe. There, hundreds of thousands of Jews were being systematically exterminated. My mother saw the Jews transported from the station. Their baggage was loaded separately into a freight train. But when the train with the people left, the freight car with the baggage stayed there. It didn't go with them. It was the holiday season, 1942.
Joseph Eckstaller filmed his children, Franz and Liesel, decorating the Christmas tree. Christmas came with sacrifice this year. Food rations had been tightened. Butter, meat, sugar, and coffee were replaced with imitation foods. Some made with potato meal or wood pulp. But for German troops in the East, it was much, much worse. All the horses have been eaten. In the 10th year of our glorious Reich, we are standing before one of the greatest catastrophes in history. For six months, the Germans had been fighting the Red Army for control of the Soviet city of Stalingrad. By December, the Soviets had surrounded the German troops and severed their supply lines. At home, Germans were told that their soldiers would rather die than surrender. Heroic battles are taking place near Stalingrad. Our sixth army is surrounded there. Will they have time to shoot themselves at the last moment? On Christmas Day alone, 1,280 German soldiers died in Stalingrad. Five weeks later, Germans heard this broadcast. The Kampf um Stalingrad is zu Ende. Ihrem Fahnen als getreu ist die sechste Armee der Übermacht des Feindes und der Ungunst der Verhältnisse erlegen. In truth, 91,000 German soldiers had surrendered against Hitler's orders. 86,000 of these men would die. And the rest would not return to Germany until 1955. After Stalingrad, 
the Germans began to doubt the Nazis' promise of total victory. Only a few suspected their true fate. Total defeat. You're watching Third Reich, The Fall. For more on the Battle of Stalingrad, go to history.com. the spring of 1943. This propaganda film series was produced to celebrate the Third Reich at the height of its dominance in Europe. But if you were German, your life look nothing like this. The Berlin Zoo was only one of the city's bombing casualties. In 1943, the Allies increased the tonnage of bombs they dropped on Germany 25 times. The British bombed by night. The Americans in broad daylight. Sirens, anti-aircraft guns, long lists of the fallen, gas and murder, mud and ice. Human beings burned alive and charred corpses. And yet, we are told of a golden future and final victory. But most now realized, no matter what the Nazis promised, they were going to lose the war. And so many began behaving like they had nothing to lose.
impossible. There can't be that many ships in the world. Here in the outskirts of Berlin, these teenagers fled the war and the ruins of the city for a moment in the sun. 600 miles away, the largest invasion in the history of the world was underway. Like everyone else in Germany, these teenagers would soon be at the mercy of the approaching allies. But they were about to find out that not all of Germany's enemies would be merciful. In this newsreel, the Nazis claimed that here, in the German village of Nemersdorf, 62 women and young girls were raped and murdered by the Red Army. If you were German, you knew now what to expect when the Red Army reached your doorstep. The hour of revenge has struck. Do not count days. Do not count miles. Count only the number of Germans you have killed. Kill the German. This is the cry of your Russian Earth. Kill the German. You're watching Third Reich, The Fall. For more on World War II, go to history.com. August, 1944. This is Hans George Klamroth. These are his home movies. He was an officer, a husband, and a father. And for 10 years, Hans George was also a loyal Nazi. But as the war dragged on, he'd become convinced that Hitler was leading Germany to its doom. And so, in the summer of 1944, when he learned of a plot to assassinate the Fuhrer he told no one. Haben Sie dem Führer den Eid geleistet? Jawohl. Ja. Als Parteinosse und als Soldat. Jawohl. Ist Ihnen klar, dass nichts weiter zu verraten war? Nein! 
Hans George Klamroth was sentenced to death by hanging. He wrote his wife, teach the children to pray. I know now what it means. Hours later, as he slowly strangled to death, his pants were pulled down around his ankles for Hitler's cameras. His family took one small comfort that he did not live to see what would become of Germany. It was the early fall of 1944. And the Allies were now closing in on Germany. In the east, there was chaos. Millions of terrified German civilians fled from their homes ahead of the advancing Red Army. We took as many of our belongings as possible and found our way out of town amidst a headless mass of fleeing people. Behind us, the town was in flames. Evacuation plans for German civilians were inadequate at best. Hitler expected his people to stand their ground and fight to the death for the fatherland. The country's last line of defense would be little boys and old men. des Kampfes für jeden Einzelnen ist gekommen. In ganz Deutschland finden sich die Männer zwischen 16 und 60 Jahren auf den freiwilligen Meldestellen ein. The recruitment age would soon be lowered to 13. March 22nd, 1945. Allied ground troops were only weeks from Germany's capital. Hitler made his final appearance on film. The radio announced that Hitler had come out of his safe, bomb-proof bunker to talk with the boys who had volunteered to die for their Führer in defense of Berlin. What a cruel lie. These boys had no choice. Boys who are found hiding are hanged as traitors, as a warning to the others.
300 miles west, American troops were taking Friedrich Kellner's hometown. For the first time, we behold Americans. Their soldiers are outstandingly equipped and remarkably well fed. After a long oppression, finally, the release. For our area then, the war is over. But not all Germans were so resigned to their defeat. Many simply couldn't imagine a Germany after the Third Reich. Mass suicide occurred across Germany on a scale never before seen in Western Europe. One hundred miles from Berlin, American troops filmed this scene. The town of Leipzig fell, and we were there. There was no Burgermeister left. He and half the city hall had committed suicide at a drinking party the night before. The last days of the Third Reich began on April 20th, Hitler's 56th birthday. More than a million Red Army soldiers were circling Berlin. Fewer than 100,000 German forces would defend the city. Beyond question, Berlin is in danger. We're cut off from the world at the mercy of the oncoming catastrophe. And we're afraid. If you lived in Berlin in April of 1945, you had no running water, no electricity, no food. And the last battle of the war was being fought outside your front door. Suddenly, the shooting and bombing stopped. What is left of Berlin is now completely under the control of the Red Army. After eight days of battle, 
the Soviet occupation began. That night, a horde of Red Army soldiers stormed into the apartment house next to ours. Then, we heard women screaming for help. is over. At that moment, the peace begins for us. But first, all of Germany's people, perpetrators, victims, and bystanders alike, would be confronted with the crimes of the Third Reich. You're watching Third Reich, The Fall. For more on World War II, go to history.com. It was April 29th, 1945. Eight days before Germany's surrender. Shortly after 9.30 a.m., the 45th Thunderbird Division of the 7th Army filmed their arrival at the town of Dachau. By now, these men had seen 511 days of combat. But what they were about to see was beyond description. The first thing we came to was a railroad track leading out of the camp with a lot of open boxcars on it. As we crossed the track, the most horrible sight I have ever seen. vaguely heard, but until now, none of us had looked on this.
It was as though we had penetrated at last to the center of the black heart, to the very crawling inside of the vicious heart. The day is over. This, April 29th, 1945. I will celebrate it for the rest of my life as my second birthday. As the day that gifted me life anew. There were more than 20,000 camps like Dachau throughout the Third Reich. In towns like Ordorf, Flossenburg, and Weimar, German men, women, and children had lived and worked, sometimes right next door. Now they were being told they had to go inside. Here, in Dachau, where the majority had voted against Hitler in 1933, the townspeople told the Americans, wir sind aber all belogen worden. We have all been lied to. They are liars, and guilty is sin. The people are to blame for their cowardice. Across Germany, the Allies forced local Nazi party members to bury the dead. If you were German, you understood that the world held you personally responsible for the crimes of the Third Reich. They accuse all of us, without exception, of being fully responsible but we hated the regime from the very beginning. Now, our longed-for deliverance means only that we are despised and hated. It serves us right. Nobody can escape this collective guilt.
At the time of surrender, more than 11 million Germans were prisoners of war. At least a million would die in captivity of hunger, exposure, and neglect. As the borders of Europe were redrawn, 12 to 14 million ethnic Germans were expelled from their homes. It was the largest movement of any single ethnic population in modern history. What awaited them in Germany? Nowhere to live and little to eat. Millions died. Those who survived would live on near starvation rations for three more years. Despite all this, if you were German, there was only one thing left to do, rebuild. is that we Germans are finished. I can't change that. I just have to swallow it. There will be hard work and short rations. But the sun is still in the sky. One thing's for sure. My life has certainly been full. All too full.